Okay, well, welcome. It's Black History Conversations. I think we're up to 134 now. I'm Liz Millman from Learning Links International, and I've got a number of my colleagues here with me today, which is wonderful. Um, and, um, oh, bye-bye then. Somebody's going already. Carol, I think. Uh, okay, so... Uh, Oh, you can tell this is live. Right, okay then. So we're delighted today that we're uh, welcoming David Gleave and he's going to tell us about his website and then we're going to talk about other good Black History websites. So practical working session today. I had a smashing session yesterday with uh, Kurt, uh, sorry, last week with Kurt um, from the Jamaica Memory Bank. So we'll mention a little bit about that. And we have got a little bit of sad news to start with. Now we start in quite a formal way because I'm in Australia. So I'm going to do the um, uh, recognition of country. And then um, I've asked our colleague from Jamaica, Dr. Vivian Crawford, he's going to do a prayer, which is the traditional way that we start things in Jamaica. And then we'll, uh, we'll look at doing um, the other uh, um, formal bits that we do to get the session started, if that's all right. So I'm going to share my screen now. Da 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 da. Chance to be a fine thing. Okay, it's here, but I just need to scroll it back up to the top, and we'll uh, get rolling. So that's good. So um, we'll be looking at uh, at uh, David's uh, website. Uh, historicalroots.com, putting the story into history. That'll be really interesting again. I, I love the site and I, I spend some time on it reading around and it's good stuff there. And I've also included the um, the cover of your book there uh, that um, you wrote with Bill Horn about Mona Baptiste and uh, it's a lovely story. And uh, okay, so on we roll. So this event is being recorded. So by joining, you give your consent. So thanks for that. We've not used that statement before, but perhaps it's something we will. I found it on another website. But in Australia, when any activity is being undertaken, even in the middle of the night like this, country can be acknowledged with a statement of respect. So for my respect, I'd like to begin with acknowledging the traditional owners of this country, the land on which I am today, the Wunjiri people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. And at the bottom, you can see there are various ways that country is acknowledged in different places. We also recognise, on behalf of Black History Conversations, the injustices of actions taken by the British and other European countries that invaded and took possession of the islands in the Caribbean Sea, as well as the continents of North and South America. And we also recognise the exploitation of the great continents of Africa, Asia, Australia and many parts of the world in the centuries of colonisation and ongoing exploitation and acknowledge that this has resulted in the destruction and destabilisation of so many nations, people and cultures. And recognising that we're also looking at the international decade for people of African descent. So we'll be doing more on that in the next season, which will be season 12 after Easter. And a personal acknowledgement, we can make other acknowledgements as well, that there are still people around in the world today who don't understand the implications of the actions taken by our European ancestors, and perhaps I should say others. Um, I pledge, pledge to endeavour that I'll try to help create better and more honest understanding of injustices of the actions of those European invaders um, as per perpetrators, I'm sure that's spelt right, of abuse to so many over such an extended time. I also pledge to make an effort to understand this shared history that destabilised so many peoples and nations around the world in the centuries of colonialization. Um, and this is about learning. This, the Black History Conversations are all about learning. We're all adults. We're all learning. We're learning from one another. So with Black History Conversations, um, I made a note to ask people to register emails in the chat um, if we haven't got that, but I think we've got everybody today. So if you want to make an acknowledgement, please be prepared to say 
that's what you're doing before you join the conversation or you ask a question. And if there's anything you wish to talk about offline, contact Garrick Prayog through the chat or there's his phone number. Okay then, so we're now going to ask um, Vivian if you'd be kind enough to start the uh, session with a prayer. Yes, Liz, sure, thank you. My privilege, pleasure and duty. So let us pray reverence to God. God is working with us and we seek to work with God. And this morning we want to share the prayer of protection by James Dillard Freeman, which is a copy left on the moon. And we want to remember in a special way as we pray this prayer, the family of Jim, the Kundin. We pray the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And gracious God, we want to thank you for lending to us Jim. You did not grieve in lending him to us. We should not grieve in returning him to his maker for what God gives, God takes away. And what is God's is ours forever. If we belong to God, rest eternal, grant unto him, O Lord, and let light perpetually shine on us. Amen. And so brothers and sisters, I just want to very quickly share a story with you because Jim, I understand worked in Guyana, where there are quite a number of Indians. And there's a beautiful Indian story I always treasure. Um, and I travel with it on my journey. And it is that when we come into this world, we cried. And our families laughed for joy. We should so live that at our end, while our families are crying because of our contribution, we can laugh because of mission accomplished. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Vivian. That was just so moving. Thank you. Um, oops, a daisy. This is back up again. All right, so we've lost. Jim, I just heard today <clears throat> that Jim had passed. Um, and uh, in the last season, we started looking to find black history heroes. And I definitely think Jim is a was a black history hero. Um, and um, I regretted, I, I knew that he wasn't well and I was waiting till he was feeling better and then we could have, could have spoken to him directly, but... Uh, that moment has passed now, but in the seventh session of Black History Conversations, which was way back in November 2020, um, Jim uh, led the session because he felt very strongly that we needed to recognise the people who had a history of indentured labour. And uh, you can see on this slide in the top corner, there's Jim's book of his life, all different, all equal. And he's got such a mixed family, wonderfully mixed family. And also his book, Our Lives, Our History, Our Future, which really helps understand a lot of the stories of black history with a special reference to Enrico Stennett, his very good friend. Then this next book is about 20th century heroes and I'm not quite sure what the other two illustrations were about all that time ago, but it was fantastic. So that is still available, and I should have had the sense to put the uh, the link there, but the link's actually in the email that I sent out today. But sadly, Jim's website isn't active. I'm a bit worried about that. So that was really lovely that we, we captured that. And also Jim's story, we started off with um, a film of his his film of his life, and we did about we we recorded in the session about ten minutes, um, 
Simon, I don't know, might you might have that that recording if you can look back all that time back, but I can't find it online. And it wasn't. I used to get it through his website. Okay, so Jim, as uh, you've just said, um, Vivian, Jim was born in Demerara um, in Guyana, where you know we know that name so well for the um, the sugar Demerara sugar. And he worked with his parents as a child labourer on the Lord Booker Sugar Plantation before arriving in London, age 17. And I think that was possibly just before the Windrush um, ship arrived, or maybe it was just after, but I think it was, well, it was definitely around that time. And he had no qualifications, but he continued his involvement in the trade union work that he'd been doing in um, Guyana uh, with the labour movement. And he carried that on until the last day, I'm sure. I've taken this off, um, off this LinkedIn page. He's with it enough to be keeping up his LinkedIn page. Jim's been involved in local, was involved in local, regional and national politics, trade unions, community organisations since the 1960s. And he's well known and respected for his work on anti-racism, equality and diversity, challenging and working with institutions and promote it, and bodies to promote fairness, justice, equality of access to opportunities and resources, supporting victims of injustice and racism, poverty, exploitation and disadvantage. And I know he used to keep his Facebook page up to speed, but I think the other thing was that he, he felt that Black History Conversations was somewhere where he could really talk, he could really give his perspectives on things and... Um, uh, one or two of us here today really remember those times and value them. But when I was doing the Google search about him, I was really touched because this came up. So Black History Conversations, and it was Friday the 13th when he gave his presentation in 2020, um, is uh, as a way for people to, to find out about him. So that was lovely. But he also, um, uh, through our link with... Um, our good colleague, who's um, Renita, Renita Cox. Um, uh, she invited him to speak on um, on Guyana Speaks. So uh, there's a recording there of that as well. So, so hopefully we've done some good things in his memory. So the sad things, but then things are going on. And amazingly, Welsh Labour have now, um, uh, Vaughan Gethin has now um, been um, uh, taken on. I don't quite know what the right term is. Um, it says here this was a few days ago, almost certainly the next First Minister. Well, he is now. So that's really amazing that Vaughan Gethin in Wales um, is the First Minister leading the Senate and led, leading into the future. So that was re really good news, really, really good news. He's such a fantastic guy. His, um, uh, his dad was a, um, a white guy who was um, a vet and he met his, um, uh, Von Gethin's mom came from, I think, Zambia. Um, I might be wrong, but um, definitely got interesting roots there. So that was good, really good news. Okay, so now, David Gleaves join, joining us to talk about the wonderful website, Historical Roots. And then we're going to start to list some other of the great websites that can be linked through our new, our new Black History Conversations website. So that's really the focus of the session today. So David, I'm just so thrilled that you've joined us. It's really, really kind of you. I know you're busy, busy, busy. Um, but uh, tell us about your your wonderful website, how it came about, and take us on a tour of it. Thanks so much. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to start rudely by turning off my camera. I've got really bad eyesight, and I have to peer really closely at the screen, so it's just not a good sight. So <clears throat> there I am. I've disappeared. Um, I'll start. I'll try and start the screen share to make sure that actually works. If I can do that, uh, how do I do that? Let's see. Share screen. Okay. Okay. You may have to bear with me. I'm. Uh, it's all right. That's fine. 
to find her way around. It was funny looking back at those really early sessions to try and find the one of Jim's and realise we have made some progress. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, um, that looks like it's uh, it's no, in no. box, so uh, now we have to find... Uh, yeah, this is the tricky bit. Once your, I find it... Your website. Yeah, okay, I'll go click there. No, that's not working. <laughs> Oh dear. Yeah. Sorry about this. We'll be there. We'll All right. There. No problem. I had it lined up, and then of course, you, yeah. Your let me let me stop sharing for a moment. I'll, right. Yeah, you you've got Scott to 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 move that up then. So I wonder, just while you're sorting that out, David, I wonder if Garrick can tell us about um how you got on Garrick this week with the um Houses of Parliament event which you uh, you organised and um and recorded where you were meeting with the, the politicians about Windrush and why we need to keep this at the forefront of discussion. Oh, David started. So yeah, sorry. We'll, we'll come back to you, um, Gary. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. I found it now. Oh, no um, problem. So first of all, how this came about, I mean, it was 2016. I was coming up to retirement after sort of 45 years in the civil service and I thought, wonder what on earth I was going to do with the rest of my life, really. Um, and I set myself a few challenges. One of the challenges was to build a web a website from scratch. I'd never had any experience of doing anything like this at all. So I knew it'd be uh, quite a difficult challenge, but that's what I wanted to try and do. Um, the, the pretext was that I'd written some children's children's books. And so the pretext was that this would give me a means of promoting my children's books. Uh, but the truth of the matter was, it was simply a way of keeping me out of mischief uh, for the for the rest of my life. So um, I had no idea what to do, but I bought a book called How to Build a WordPress Website in a Weekend, uh, which was a bit ambitious because three months later, after lots of cursing and swearing, I had a working website. Um, it had very little content, but nonetheless, it worked. And I knew how to add content to it. So um, and it, the subject had to be about black history because that's what the children's books were about. Um, and I'll mention those briefly towards the end. Um, but anyway, this is what the site now looks like. It had very little content to begin with, but gradually we started to add content. And I'll take you through some of the content that we added. Uh, at that time, my wife, Roxanne, was working on a project to do with black soldiers in World War I. Uh, and so we'd already got one or two pieces of work uh, that we could put on the website to do with that subject. So first of all, um, I'm going to take you to the A to Z index uh, to introduce you to um, one of the black soldiers that we were looking at. Uh, I should say I'm very, very proud of this index because this has all been crafted by me using code and stuff like that. Um, uh, something I've got no idea what to do anyway. Click on the T, it takes you down here. Now, um, we've got an article about William Tull, uh, the forgotten older brother of Walter. Uh, we visited Folkestone, Roxanne, and I took photos of his grave and various houses that he lived in. But I'm not going to talk about him today. I'm going to take him instead to Lionel Turpin. Um, this was somebody her project had looked at, uh, and they'd actually employed a historian on this project, and he had said, nobody knows where Lionel Turpin is buried, his grave is lost. Well, Roxanne and I went to Leamington Spa, uh, and we were able to find his grave. So this is the article we wrote to begin with before we'd found his grave, just a short piece about Lionel Turpin. Uh, if we go back to the index, you'll see there's a separate separate item. Now, when we went to Leamington Spa, that was his grave. It was just a plot of grass. Um, uh, actually, that's slightly the wrong piece of grass, but we met the man who runs the cemetery purely by chance. He just happened to be there that day, and he pointed us to the right piece of grass, which we didn't take a photo of. However, one of my sort of great pride and joys of historical roots is we were able to make contact with Lionel Turpin's descendants, and his grave is now marked uh, with with oh, their, their help. <clears throat> so we've achieved that, and I'm pleased about that. Uh, I have to say the wording is their choice, not mine. It makes no mention of the fact that he was black uh, or born in British Guyana, uh, but nonetheless, uh, it's something that wasn't there sort of five years ago, and it's there now. So that's nice. Um, so. That's Lionel Turpin. There are quite a few other black soldiers on this website, but I'm going to take you now to Barbados um, because we were joined by a guy called Bill Hearn. Bill 
uh, worked in the same department as me for more or less the same number of years, and we retired at the same time. Uh, and he was involved in Roxanne's project. I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the search box here. Uh, he was involved in Roxanne's project, and um, he volunteered to give us articles about black soldiers who were buried on um, Barbados. Where's the search box from? There we go. So, um, no, where's the best place to find his black? So, yeah, so there is actually a section on the website about black soldiers on Barbados. Yeah, there we are. Right, so Bill Hearn has written a whole series of articles for us about black soldiers who are buried on Barbados and who have Commonwealth war graves. So here, uh, if we put, uh, if we go back to the index, we can find one as an example of the articles he's written about uh, black soldiers buried on Barbados. So if you're interested in black soldiers or you have a particular interest in Barbados, Bill's written articles about all of their uh, graves, their, their, their service records and so on here. So you can find Barbados graves on this website. Um, so the next thing that happened was we, Roxanne and I went to an event organized by some people called uh, What's Happening in Black British History. They were good events. And we saw a lady called Audrey Duji speaking at the event we went to in Huddersfield. And uh, yeah, Audrey was a bit of a hero of ours because uh, she, we, we were aware of her through the book she'd edited, the, the Mary Seacole book she'd edited. Uh, and we, Roxanne went up and spoke to her afterwards and uh, we were thrilled that when Audrey offered us, offered, offered us one or two um, articles for the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put whales in the search box. Because if you're trying to find your way around the site, um, the, the quickest way I find to find Audrey's article about North Wales, which I know, I know you've seen this, um, is to put whales in the search box. And it's not that one. And it's not really that one. It's this one. Discovering Black History in Wales, the early days. This is Audrey's article about that. Uh, and it's, it's a I think you can vouch for it, Liz. It's a long, it's a good article, good introduction to the early days. Absolutely fascinating. It's a really good article. So uh, that, that was written by Audrey. And I say we were thrilled, really, when Audrey started to offer us uh, articles. She's written several very good articles for us. That's just one example. Um, another man who spoke at uh, Huddersfield was uh, a guy called John Ellis. Uh, he's a bit of an expert on black soldiers and sailors in Napoleonic times. Uh, and I have to say that everything John said at that event in Huddersfield was news to me. Uh, and that's one of the things about this site. I have learned so much. I mean, if you'd asked me uh, five, six, seven years ago about black British history, I'd have probably said, well, the Windrush and maybe a handful of people in London, Bristol and Liverpool before the Windrush, but literally only in those places and only a few. Well, I mean, that is just nonsense. As I'm sure you all know, that, that's rubbish. But I've learned that over the last few years. You know, the black presence is everywhere. And there are many, many more black people in British history than, uh, than I was aware. And, and I think after today, there'll be many more that you weren't aware of, because um, John Ellis has found a few more in the last couple of days. So um, John Ellis has written us loads and loads of articles. Um, <clears throat> and... I'd take you to his most recent article, I think, because that's where he has identified. There we go. Black Soldiers and Edinburgh. <clears throat> now, John gets very excited when he finds a new digital source and they come out all the time. Brand new sources that you can trawl through looking for black presence. John found uh, on Ancestry a register of, uh, I think it was, you had to, if you wanted to enlist in a regiment in Edinburgh in those years, you had to do so in the presence of a, of a JP, a magistrate. And John found, uh, digitised the records of the Edinburgh magistrate. And he's done what he does. He goes through them looking for any evidence of black people in those registers. And I'll just scroll through it very, very quickly. It's, it, yeah, he talks about the, the history of uh, the, the regiment. There's there's the sort of recreation of the barracks that they would have lived in in Edinburgh Castle. Uh, but... There are about 30, and that's the court, that's the place where they would have done the uh, swearing in, in front of the magistrate. Um, but John has found, I think there's at least 30 people named in this article that none of you will ever have heard of. They're all, they're all black. I've, in, I've indexed them all. Basically, if somebody's name is in bold, like that one, 
that means you can find him in the index. Um, and you know, Green was an interesting story. He, he actually got trans, ended up being transported to Australia, uh, uh, and uh, actually uh, in uh, Van Diemen's Land, I think. And he was he received 175 lashes for various offences. Well, in fact, I've been reading quite a lot about this Liz recently, and uh, I know that uh, people got 100 lashes just for smiling. <laughs> <laughs> when they were in the ch working in the chains chain gang, so um, getting 175 lashes probably means he's quite well behaved, really. Anyway, uh, if you scroll down, you can see some of the names of people. There's a in, a in an annex here. He's got every one of these people is was a black soldier who enlisted in Edinburgh during those years. And as you can see, there's I haven't counted them, but there's uh, certainly well over 20 of them. I think probably 30. So that is something you won't ever have seen because. That only went live a couple of days ago. The ink is still wet, really, on that particular page. Um, so I'll go back up now and go to, I don't have to scroll, use the arrow button, go straight back up to the top. How clever. Um, the, the other, so we've got lots of stuff about soldiers and sailors. Uh, we've also got stuff, quite a lot of Windrush generation material. Um, the one I'm going to look at today is... Uh, the story of the Jamaican producer, because that's one that's the one I did relatively recently. Now, I know the Windrush was an important book, that uh, important ship. Obviously, it brought a just over a thousand people to Britain. Um, but the Jamaican act producer actually brought three times as many people as that. Now, it did so over a period of a number of years and it brought about 50 at a time. But it plowed back and forth across the Atlantic about 10 times a year. And each time it came, it brought 50 people. So it didn't take long for the Jamaican producer to bring more people <clears throat> than the Windrush ever did. So I think that's interesting. The, you know, we talk about the Windrush, rightly so, but we tend, if we're not careful, to forget all the other ships uh, that brought people, of which uh, the Jamaican producer was just one. <clears throat> so, and the Jamaican producer had a really interesting history, actually, because it was also a merch. It served in the merchant fleet during the war. It came under attack, uh, but survived. Um, and then it, after, the, after the war, there's a, an example of the passenger list. These are all available on, on Ancestry. Every passenger list for the Jamaican producer is there for you to look through. <clears throat> I mean, I, you, know, you could pick on any one of these names and you could find out about somebody's life. Um, Bill Hearn has done that for the Windrush itself, but you know, every ship brought people who led interesting lives. Um, there's, there's a cricketer. Uh, Richard Livingston Fuller uh, was one of the people who travelled a couple of times on the Jamaican producer coming over to play cricket in Lancashire. Um, but I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom. Uh, it, this is quite a long article. It's, it, it was picked, the Jamaican producer got mentioned in the British newspapers a few times. Uh, <clears throat> it, I made the point here that the, the Jamaican producer took people both ways. So I picked a year at random, and this shows you how many people came in on the Jamaican producer in 1953 and how many people went back on the return journey. And you'll see that the total that year, 444 came in and 257 went back the other way. Uh, the Jamaican producer also got mentioned in the Gleaner. And so there's a section there about what I found in the Gleaner about the Jamaican producer. Uh, and what I wanted to Jamaica, take down... Jamaica producers are still a, a company today who deal with shipping, mainly banana shipping and other shipping back and forth. So, yes, they helped us in years ago with computers we were sending to Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, the Jamaica producer, there, there were actually several ships called the Jamaica producer over the years. I focused on one. Uh, there was, yeah. a, I think there was one before this, which didn't last very long. And there was another one with the same name after this. So I focused on this particular ship. Um, what I wanted to just scroll down to the end was uh, right at the very end, I've given you here for anybody who's interested, uh, a list of all the voyages that the Jamaican producer made from 1934 all the way through to when it finished, which was in 19, whenever it was. Ooh, there you go. The last voyage was in November, 1960. Uh, and yeah, that, that tells you how many people uh, came on each of those voyages. Um, so that was the Jamaican producer. As I say, I think that puts the Empire Windrush into a little bit of a different perspective. Um, so the, the final thing I was going to do really was just to go use the arrow, David, use the arrow. It's there. That's what's there for. Uh, just to go back across the top, these top categories here. So 
uh, there's a contact page. If you ever want to contact me, but you can't remember my email address, that does work. So that's, uh, you, can, you can use that to contact me. Uh, the Windrush generation I've just talked about, there are various stories on there. Uh, as you can see, a few stories. Uh, the 20th century, uh, World War I and beyond. Uh, that's got, uh, I shouldn't have clicked on that. Uh, yeah. There's, that, 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 there's a kind of a, a drop down menu that comes off there and tells you all of the stories for the 20th century. Uh, obviously, these century markings are a little bit arbitrary because people were born in the 18th century and died in the 19th century. Generally speaking, I've put people in the centuries where they were most active. So the 19th century, this is where you will find many, many John Ellis articles about soldiers and sailors. I, I won't scroll right to the bottom, but there's loads of them. Uh, Fragments is a page, basically John came up with lots of little bits and pieces that didn't quite deserve a page of their own. So I've put them into this page called Fragments. Uh, it's a single page and it, you just scroll down through it and you can see uh, different fragments that John has identified that date from the 18th and or the 19th century. The 18th century is relatively thin. There's an article there, um, which is Audrey, that's Audrey's article, Roots Entwined, that's another one of Audrey's. Uh, discovering Black History in Wales is there. Uh, so there's a few, there's not so many in the 18th century. News, that page takes you to the blog that I, that I do from time to time. So if you subscribe to the blog, you will get, well, here's a, just a few, that's the most recent post, a story of somebody who uh, was born on Jamaica, uh, ended up, when he died, he was working as a slave servant in Hampton Court. Um, Although it was a long and interesting life in between those, that starting point and that end point. Uh, there was a, that's a bit about a, an art, an, an academy, a, an, an exhibition that's currently going on at the Royal Academy in London. Very interesting exhibition with some in, very interesting pictures in it. Um, so there's that. And if you subscribe to the, uh, the blog, you'll get you know a post maybe once, twice a month, which will tell you what's going on at the moment um so that's news then our books this is kind of why i started the site notionally in the first place but there's a few more books now so basically the most recent one is one that i've published i'm now a book publisher on behalf of stephen bourne who some of you may have heard of um, so that's about two black female uh, composers who had famous fathers ira aldridge was the father and samuel courage taylor was the father there of Amanda and Avril. That's one book. That's the last book that I wrote uh, myself in, connect, in conjunction with John Ellis and a lady from the National Health Service Archives, sorry, Royal College of Nursing Archives, about a black nurse in Victorian Britain that we researched together. That's the Mona Baptiste book. Mona was a passenger on the Empire Windrush itself uh, and went on to have an interesting recording and film career. Uh, I wrote this book with a lady called Maria Downer who goes to my wife's church and just in casual conversation, my wife established that Maria's father and two uncles served in the British West Indies Regiment in the First World War. So she had an interesting story to tell. And then there are the three children, children's books that originally started this whole thing off. Uh, so we've got uh, Elizabeth Dido Bell, uh, Walter Tull and Samuel Courage Taylor where two modern girls by the miracle of writing, go back and meet these people. Uh, and we have a little story about them. And then there's some actual history at the back of the book as well. So that people have a little adventure story and then they learn the actual history as well. That's the idea. And the final book here, <coughs> Football Black Pioneers. Now I know you may not be interested in football particularly, but I have to say this book um, covers a hundred years of British history, really. And the experiences of the footballers you know, tell a lot about the experience of being black in Britain uh, from about 1880 onwards. And for any of these books, if you click on the cover, lo and behold, it takes you through to Amazon where you can buy them. So, <clears throat> so that's the books page. I think I'm probably just about coming to the end of what I was going to say now. Let me see what else. I'll just have a quick note here. Oh yeah. If you scroll down to the very bottom of this home page, oh no, let me go to the home page. If you go to the home page, if you wish to subscribe, which means you'll get the occasional posts about things that we've done. 
then you put your email address in there and you get added to the subscriber list. And if you're interested, there are a couple of other websites. So basically, there is a website about the football pioneers, which has got quite a, quite a lot of information that is not in the book. So there's that. And if if you click there, we've got some more information about Mona Baptiste, which is not in the book. So there you go. There's Mona. Uh, so I think that was what I was planning to say. So apologies for a few false starts there. But that's, um, that's that's a very, very quick tour. As you can see, there's there's lots and lots more. So shall I stop sharing now? Is that? Yeah, that'll be fine. Yeah. I don't know how long that took. You told me I could have 15 minutes. I've no idea what that was. But... <laughs> well, it doesn't matter, does it? That was just great. Well, uh, that gives me great confidence to know that we've got another WordPress operator within our Black History Conversations um, group of folks um, because our website, we're going to start to use that as well. So any comments that anybody wants to uh, make at the moment? June Elizabeth? And then Gary. Uh, so, yes. Um, I was going to say that, and um, thank you for the presentation, David. I have a few of David's books, especially the, the last one about the flat pioneers. And um, I've got the one with the children, the, the, the two friends. I think that's a Walter Tull one. And I've, I've got the Mona Baptiste. <laughs> I've got a few of them because I think I met you on a a football program a few years ago. I think um, the, the late um, Benjamin Zafire Zafire was on the platform as well. It was about maybe about well, I don't know, and he he was promoting his little book as well. Do you remember, yeah. David? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes. uh, one of one of. Yeah, I'm really thrilled to say that Benjamin Zephanar actually dialed into our Zoom when we did a, a, a book about the Black Footballers book. And so I mean, it's a yeah. real, real privilege to have Benjamin uh, there. Yeah, I was there a, then, yeah. Great, a great loss. Yes, yeah, great loss, yeah. And I, feel like I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed how you you made it so easy, the the website. And I'm, I'm friendly with Audrey. Sometimes we... we um, talk to each other. I don't know why I thought she was in North Wales, but she lives in Yorkshire. Yeah. 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 And she promotes a lot. You know, she sends a lot of information. So I think I'm going to subscribe now. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Um, well, I would, what, I would, what I would say, I'm glad you said it. it's easy to use. I mean, what that conceals is the swan's feet paddling away frantically below beneath the surface, which uh, I, I won't show you, but there's all sorts of stuff going on in the background there. Uh, and the amount of swear words, that went creating that index. Um, poor old Roxanne. My my jump tags aren't working. You know, things like that. So sorry about that. Anyway, yeah. Glad you like it. Wonderful. That's really lovely. So Garrett, you were going to comment. Yeah. Thank you very much, David, for for sharing uh, this site. It, you know, it's it, it's really um excellent resource um to direct people um where they can find um information but also material that can be used uh, in schools in colleges in in, in different um uh, educational setting and you know i think it's important that you know such resource is is out there in 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 the public domain um because often it is the case where um teachers shy away from these subject matter because they don't know where to get the, uh, the, the material from. And they are very fearful of misinterpreting the material. And so they just decide not to do anything. So here we are, you know, we can direct them to um, a rich source of information uh, similar to um, the um educational resource on Windrush Foundation, yeah. which is very much uh, for schools. Um, so you know, lots of information's out there. And and sometimes, you know, we, we as Liz said, you know, we are learning new things every time. <laughs> you know, uh some of the um 
the names that you've just uh, highlighted, you know, um, I don't know all these people. But again, we have a reference point where we can go and, and you know, look at these uh, um, these um, individuals and, and learn a bit more about, uh, about the, you know, their life and, and their contribution to society. But I think also we just need to share this information as widely as we can uh, to make sure other people have got access to this rich resource. So thank you very much for that, David. Mm. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Ro thank Roxanne you, was a, that was fantastic. Roxanne, um, Roxanne was a class teacher for many, many years and the, the, the children's books started because she came home and she said, there aren't enough stories that feature mixed heritage children. I'm trying to talk to children in my class um, and I haven't got any resources to use. You claim to be a writer because I was, you know, writing loads of stuff, uh, civil service type stuff. She said, you claim to be a writer, write me a book. <laughs> so that's how, that's how those short stories started. Um, and the other, I mean, the other, the other thing was, you know, if anybody ever says to anybody, there weren't many black people in Britain in before the Windrush or whenever, um, and if you'd said that to me 10 years ago, I'd have probably been one of those people that said that. But, you know, I've been educated by this site as much as anybody else, really. It's, it's, it's the, the richness and diversity and wealth of Black British history uh, continues to astonish me. Yes, it is incredible. There is just so much, so much information. Just amazing. And and if I think if you... Um, have a mindset that you are a learner um, and this is these are opportunities to learn then these are we're promoting ways to learn and as Garrick says to have you know lots of articles that's one way to learn and um, to hear people talk about different aspects of black history that's another another way but you have to have a kind of frame to be able to hook all these these different stories on because there's just there's just so much out there and so many stories and and your site's just brilliant really brilliant Vivian did you want to come in with anything I can't remember whether you put your hand up or not yes Vivian lovely I wanted yes. to say thanks so much to David because these conversations remind us that there is a destiny which makes us one. And when I heard some of these names, I said, wow, Turpin. There are only six listings of the name Turpin in the um, Jamaican directory. Then I heard about Ellis. That's a name in my own district, Moortown, and would have been one of the persons who assisted Nanny in the signing of the treaty. It's, 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 it's so fascinating, but I hasten to speak about the ship, the SS producer. Again, I hope one day it will be possible, David, to identify some of those persons who traveled on the SS producer, the ship, long before airplane became popular. Because perhaps you do not know that Lord Robert Baden Powell, the founder of the scout movement, when he traveled to Jamaica on one of those ships in 1910, who did he meet on the ship? The person to be his wife. And he proposed <laughs> to her, uh, Lady Olive Soames, at what is now um, was then Myrtle Bank Hotel on Harbour Street in Kingston. It's now the Foreign Affairs Ministry. There is really a, dis a destiny which makes us one. And he spoke about, and rightly so, about black people, black Jamaicans were in England, um, um, First World War, Second World War, and so on. And one of those to whom perhaps the attention is not given that he deserves is, um, uh, um, yes, is a, a famous sculpture um, in uh, at the uh, Moody, Ronald Moody, a very, very famous Jamaican sculpture. Um, whose works at the National Portrait Gallery. And his brother was a famous Jamaican doctor, Custis of St. Andrew, who donated quite a lot of lands for the building of Woolmer's High School. So there's really a destiny which makes us one. We are not isolated. 
we are all family and we i want to thank you very much and remember to say hi to croydon <laughs> yeah okay, okay. Croydon, croydon says hi back uh, i mean every one of those passenger lists is available if, if you're if you've got access to ancestry you know all the Jamaican producer at pastoralists are there. Anybody can look at them. Uh, I found my father-in-law, not on the Jamaican producer, he came to England on the SS Cotica. And the Cotica was one that made several journeys to England, bringing, bringing people from the Caribbean. Uh, you know, you, you could spend your whole life, really, just finding these ships and looking at the passenger lists. Uh, say <laughs> that just on Jamaican producer alone, there are 3,000 names for you to look at. <laughs> Wow, yes, yeah, so many stories. Well, wonderful. June Elizabeth? Yes. Um, Sir Cliff was just reminding me and asked maybe Dr Crawford knows his friend, Tony Hall Ellis, who's a Jamaican playwright. And he used to be in London and he had a um, cafe jam where we used to go and in Brixton, and he used to put on plays. But the thing is, he came from, is it Kutcher, a uh, maroon area in St. Elizabeth, and he took Sir Cliff there. And got quite a lot of photographs of them in, in um, the maroon. A compong, a compong. A compong, Sir Cliff. Yeah, a compong, yeah, comp yeah. We've got that's a lot of pictures of him. That's where Did the first street he was signed, of course. That's you where know, the Tony. Was in 1739 yeah. with the British. And I was very privileged in 2020 to have been the guest speaker for that annual conference. They have it there from 1740. Every year it is held, a compound, and you must visit it. Yes. Uh, Thousands of people there. Okay. So you knew Tony? Of course, everybody knows him. We were oh, talking about, we didn't know if he was still about, you know, so that's nice. Yes, well, he would, okay. he's invisible. <laughs> I know. Nice little man, I liked him. Yes. Okay, thank you for that. It's a destiny which makes us one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just wonderful. Well, thank you so much uh, to all of you. Uh, Lindy, did you have anything you wanted to, to add? I uh, can't hear you, Lindy. Sorry. No, I'll, I'll just leave you. If you if you want to add anything, come in in a minute. All right. Um. Okay. Yeah. Lindy, what did you want? To, did you want to add yeah. anything? No. I, well, it's a lovely website, and I should go back and have a look at it at uh, uh, at a much more leisure. And as you say, it looks splendidly easy to uh, to use. Um. I just had my eye caught by the term. Um, black Bayesians, and I wondered what the Bayesian came from, because uh, uh, Bayesian, it's an unusual word, but it was also the word used, or is still used, as far as I know, uh, by for the first year students in at Aberdeen University. So I just wondered if perhaps Bayesian soldiers would be like, you know, er early ones or beginners, or whether it had some other connotation in, in this uh, in this context. Um, I think I think Bajan, I think that's what they I think that's what people from Barbados call themselves actually. I mean I think yeah. that's that's a current term. You know, ah, yeah, right. that's the name Bajan. Right. So it's more more obvious, right? I think yeah, the, the this, I think the uh, the university term is supposed to come from the term for Bajan, meaning a, a yellow beak or something. It's therefore a young baby, <laughs> a young a young uh, bird. <laughs> Yeah. So a different, a different origin, right? Okay. Uh, you're yeah. from Aberdeen. Yeah. Are you from yeah. Aberdeen? No, I'm not from Aberdeen, but I, uh, I, I lived there for oh, 20, 30 years, and uh, oh. uh, and I wrote a, I wrote an account of the women first oh. starting at the university there. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm now doing research about a woman who started a, a an anti-racism movement in the late 19th century, and she lived uh, a lot of her, most of her life in Aberdeen so we have, a, have Aberdeen in Jamaica yes well <laughs> home I, away I feel, from home <laughs> I feel I feel that may, may be um, it, colonial or imperial imprinting isn't it rather you ought to give it a different name <laughs> there's quite a lot I of Aberdeen so. around it's embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> oh right okay now I'm going to just jump in right away to show off oh this is interesting. 
changed already. Tonson is working on our website on WordPress. And so um, I've met up with him a couple of times. So our website, um, I'm just going to show you, perhaps I've done it before. Um, we're going to have this um, tab, which will take you into any of the Black Industry Conversations. But if I just jump down, you can see that here we've got some of the seasons. And so now we'll have completed, today we'll have completed 11 seasons. But we also must have um, a search button. I realise that and made a comment about that. Um, then also we're going to have a facility to register so that, um, uh, I don't know if Simon's still with us, um, in order to, to, um, to, you, to get into the sessions, you need to register. Now we used to do that before and it caused some quite complications, but we think that this is going to be an easy way of doing it. And when people register, they may also have the choice to um, be able to um, get updates um, and, and be on the mailing for the sessions like I do at the moment or they can opt out. Then in terms of the resources, like you, we want to have some articles um, and, um, and then um, I've mentioned the blog, but I'm really interested in doing something about... Um, about regional history and making it possible, for example, if you're really interested in the black history of Peterborough, and we know that people have done some research there, that there's a link to what those people are doing. Now, there is a big, um, I'm not sure if it's British Museum or the National Library or somebody's doing something on this, so it may be that we might just be able to provide a link to their source. So we also want to include books in our, our site because we have a number of authors who've spoken with us and, and recommendations of other books. But I think the next one's really interesting. There are really good free e-books now. Um, a lot of academics who write know they're not going to make a fortune of massive sales so they just make their book free uh, freely available online which is which is just fantastic then youtube and film links it's really nowadays um a really good source of source of learning maybe we ought to have um netflix on here as well because there's there's loads of stuff on netflix that uh, films that people can access information um the black history conversation powerpoints which at one stage used to be um a bit more informative and were catching up with what was going on but haven't been so much like that of late but whether there's anything useful there but one of the things that i do as well is if for example i'm researching any particular country then i put all the information on the website so that might work for the regional history thing and then other people's websites so david you're going to be included first there so that would be good and then we'll have something about us about our team and our advisors any updates and how people contact us so that's that's where we're at so far with that so um, I hope that's looking sensible. Any comments about that? Looking good, Liz. Yeah, looking good. Mm -hmm. And what's really lovely is that Jim provided the funds for the website. So um, it's just really poignant. It's taken us so long, though. We need to have a need to have a comment there, and that's 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 true. So uh, yeah. Okay, now I think next on our um, programme of activities, this is what the website looked like before, <laughs> earlier today. The picture was still there of um, uh, uh, Reverend William Hughes. Um, so, yeah, and then on the first page, there's going to be the registering button. And then you see how I do the um, advert for the session. This is how, how they'll look on the on the site anyway so um has anybody got any other recommended particularly recommended black history websites or can i i set this as your easter holidays homework um i just googled black history websites and um 
I'm coming from Australia, okay, so I see my my searches come from a different way of yours. And uh, the American ones came came up thick and fast because American black history is very different from Caribbean black history, different mm -hmm. from British black history, different from each European country's got its own own story to tell. And then in Africa, we've got African history and then the rest of the world. So um, this was an interesting site that really caught my eye because it's called Black, blackpast.org. And it speaks about um, why this is so important now, um, considering recent headlines. And then it, you know, brought up half a dozen things, which is just just truly app appalling. Well, what's fantastic about websites is they can be so current. They're saying, you know, what's happening, you know, in Virginia, a governor sets up a tip line for students to inform on teachers who teach such diverse concepts as black history. In Florida, <laughs> a governor's blocked the college board's AP African American Studies course. Doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to Americans, it's not, perhaps not us. In Kentucky, the school board bans a book, Ruby Bridges Goes to School. Um, a book that Bridges wrote for second graders about how she integrated New Orleans schools in the 1960s because so much has been done by our colleagues in the black communities over the years. And, you know, that this is this is history that's been happening. So it's a really interesting site. And um, just the, also they've got a, um, a brilliant African and American history timeline and for those of us who don't know too much about African American history, that's a really good resource in that as well. So I think uh, I think that was most of the things. The one thing that I I picked up, and I wasn't going to pick up a whole lot because I know you, you you'll be giving me suggestions, and I will. But now we're going to uh, if it's okay. Anything else about websites before Garrick uh, talks about the Windrush Manifesto influencing the next election, which was Wednesday. Anything else about websites? Oh, okay. Just a question, Liz, on the website. <clears throat> it came up in conversation this morning when I was discussing with uh, organization regarding um, um, website. Um, many websites are not um, compatible with mobile smartphones. So uh, we need to problem. ensure that our website can be accessed yeah, uh, through yeah, a mobile yeah, app. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm just going to share another um, another um, website because you can tell that uh, Robert that we uh, we look this one up. We can uh, count count this one in. This is a, a wonderful website that the um, North Wales um, Regional Equality Network produced phenomenal amount of work went into it and it's really really interesting about flinch's history and heritage and links to the slave trade um and it tells a lot about the the stories in the background of african enslavement lots of careful explanations she's a lovely can't remember her name lindy the girl who did this just amazing yeah. Uh, is it Vanessa? Uh, uh, no, Rick. It wasn't Was it Vanessa. Mur Murtha. Was it no. Murtha? Murtha, I think it might have been. I uh, never uh, met her because oh, I right. think she did it from a distance. I think it oh, might okay. be Mur Murtha. Um, and particularly the Greenfield Valley, there's quite a lot of stuff, and also about um, the there's copper in Anglesey. They're so, still uh, tweaking a few errors that are, that are there and still correcting a few things, but that, perhaps that's a, a permanent state of affairs when it's always well, updating things. It. Yeah, and, and, and things can be current, current and people can mm. comment. I can't see whether there's comments on here, but there must be somewhere where you can get into it and, and, mm. and say to people. So, yeah, a, a great site that was. I found I, I learned a lot about... Uh, about the different uh, aspects, prominent. They're still finding out how important the Greenfield Valley was uh, in, in the yes. whole um, yeah. 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 plantation slavery involvement. Mm. Yeah. 
So the Pennant family talks about them. We talk a lot about that. Uh, yeah, so really a really good, useful site. I just wanted to add that one as well. Okay, Garrick, over to you then. I'll hear about what was going on in London. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Um, just to... Um... Just to bring you up to speed, um, so in January 2024, uh, we held our um, Windrush rally and uh, we gave it a theme because we realized that um, there will be a general election sometime in 2024. And so that theme was uh, the Black Manifesto influencing the general election. And we invited um, specifically, um, all the political parties, front bench uh, MPs. So that would be, you know, um, the leader of the parties or their deputy. Um, and just to say, um, when I said all the MPs, that will include uh, the Welsh MPs as well as the, um, uh, the Irish MPs. Um, north and south and to no surprise uh, on the day um, none of the um, political parties um, MP was represented in the room um, however there was one MP um, who took time to come into the room and that was represented by the Green Party. Um, no other parties send their apology um, at all. They just did not respond. However, we continue to um, engage with them. So um, last Wednesday, we returned with our second rally um, to continue the conversation around the Windrush Manifesto. And um, again, different MP was invited. This time it was sponsored by um, SNP uh, Aberdeen North MP Kirsty Blackman. And also we had a, a pop in visit from Sir Peter Bottomley, um, who came in. Um, to the session. So um, we had a couple of invited guests contributing to the manifesto. Age UK have produced a report um, regarding um, the Windrush compensation scheme and uh, confirming uh, that it should be um, taken away from the Home Office and placed elsewhere. Um, that report is now in the public domain, so people can actually yeah. read it themselves. You can go to Age UK website and find it. Um, it's being circulated to many um, organizations, both voluntary, public, and others. And I've also targeted um, the political um, parties uh, so they all have a copy each uh, of that re um, report, um, that research. We're now in the process of writing, um, finalizing the manifesto ready um, for the end of April so that it can be sent to all the political parties. At this time, as you know, they will be um, fine tuning their, their policy and the manifesto getting ready um, for the autumn elections. As we know, um, it's unlikely to be May because they've passed the deadline. So it's likely to be the, the autumn. So that is a working progress. And the purpose of the manifesto is that we're producing a, a document, um, not just for the politicians, but also for the community to have information when politician knock at your door seeking your vote, you can uh, use this as a means of challenging and asking question. Well, what 
are you doing or what will you be doing if you win the next election around Windrush? And in that manifesto, we identify a number of key um, things that need to be done. Uh, firstly, that um, the scheme need to be independent. Uh, secondly, the scheme need to be legal aided. And thirdly, the scheme need to uh, have the same equity as the post office scandal, the blood scandal, the, the pension, all the different scandal that is currently uh, in the public domain. And why should Windrush be any different from mm. any other scandal? Certainly. And yeah. we have emphasized the point, the current blood scandal, sorry, the current horizon scandal, the initial payment is 600,000. 600,000, the initial payment. The initial payment for Windrush is 10,000. But it wasn't 10,000 two years ago. It was 250, and we fought to get it to 10,000 as an initial payment. Now, how does that compare across the other schemes? And these are the questions we're asking. And it's important uh, to acknowledge that this government um, have not shown any interest in the Windrush uh, compensation scheme, despite all the campaign uh, both in the public as well as in the Lords. Um, Floella Benjamin, Baroness Benjamin, have took this matter to the House of Lords three times. And only recently, the last four weeks, she has stated she doesn't want to bring this again to the House. Uh, and there's no, hasn't been any action. So, you know, this is important that, you know, um, the next administration, whichever that is, whether it would be a, a majority or a coalition, um, the purpose of us reaching out to all the political parties is to make sure that Windrush is on the agenda and keep it high um, for each of the political party. So we will continue with our bi-monthly uh, campaign to draw attention to these issues. But more importantly, we want other people, and we've stated this many times, we want other people to write to their MPs and express yeah, their uh, concern as to why Windrush is not seen in the same light as all the other scandal. And we've seen the response of the Prime Minister following Mr. Bates versus the post office scandal, how quick he responded to, to Channel 4 when he was interviewed, and how quick the government have brought about legislation to squash the, uh, um, the miscarriage of justice uh, for those who uh, were wrongly accused of fraud. Um, and so we're asking for the same energy and the same commitment to uh, the government um, to respond. And so, you know, our MP, uh, regardless of who our MP is or what political party they, they belong to, just highlighting these issues will bring it to their attention so they will know that we're not happy the community, uh, the people. And it was said in the House of Commons, sorry, in the House of Lords, it is the great British scandal. That's the term that was used in the Lords. A shameful British scandal yet to be resolved. Yes, um, Gary, right. they... They said home home office as well, home office scandal. I always said that, you know, we should call it the home office or British government scandal because mm -hmm. as a historian, years later, when people are doing their research, they'll be saying, 
let's have a look what scandal, what kind of scandal the Windrush people got on with. And that is so unfair. But as we mm. know, when it comes to black history, a lot of it is reversed, is it not? Mm. You know? So I'm glad that, um, I think it was, um, the, what's the name? Is it Dame? The Dame. Dame Florida Benjamin. Mm. Yeah, she wrote that in her uh, mm. address as well. You yes. know, we have to put it in our address. So the poem that I'm going to read on behalf of the Jamaican or poet on Windrush Beagle at Windrush Square, when she wrote that poem, I, I asked her, could she add those two words in front of Windrush? Yes, yes. And what June Elizabeth has just mentioned, so on the 6th of April would be the 6th anniversary of Winrush scandal or home office scandal, as we, we've just heard. Um, and that will be held in Brixton in Winrush Square from 12 till 2. Um, it is now agreed that will be an uh, annual event and it represents um, uh, a national uh, vigil. Um, we also want to acknowledge those who have died, who have campaigned and have not um, received uh, their their compensation or, or their status. We want to acknowledge Hello, those, those, those people as well at the uh, at the vigil. Mm. Right, yes. thanks very much, Eric. That's brilliant. Sorry, I'm copying. I just wanted to Copy add that. The, the Windrush National Organisation is, is taking the lead, but it is a national and it's candlelit. We're going to have a candlelit visual and um, we ha will have about maybe half a dozen three minute speakers and a few of the clergy as well. So we just want to make everybody know everyone is welcome. And I can see Liz needs to go to bed. <laughs> thank you then right okay well thank you so much the work you do is absolutely brilliant so just to say that um we start after easter with a fantastic speaker atinuka <coughs> oh, excuse me and so um we're really looking forward to that and we've got some other good things planned for that session. So over Easter, we're hoping to get the website sorted. So I hope you all have a really good break. And thank you very much for joining us. Vivian, was there anything else you wanted to add? I missed your hand earlier. I didn't want to prolong the discussion, but I am young enough to inquire whether what is happening now about wind rush isn't it the same concept about enslavement mm. that people of African descent are half animal and half human and therefore are not worthy of any compensation? We are animals. And I am really taken aback that whereas in enslavement, we had Sir Thomas Fawil Buxton and Granville Sharp and the Quakers, where are the descendants of those people today when all this been rush was going on? My, I went in, in, 18, in 1986, 76, 86, I was in England and my brother was taking me to London um, Zoo. We're waiting at the bus stop and a group of youngsters passed, niggas go home. And there we were serving. So is this generation being educated of what they now have that someone provided it for them? Who are the people? Who are the movers? I see June Elizabeth say going to have a ceremony. I'm sorry, I'm tired of ceremonies. I'm really tired of ceremonies because ceremonies for me just some band-aid. It's not a ceremony. It's not a ceremony, it's not a ceremony um, Dr. <clears throat> Vivian. It's just a remembrance of our people that came before Windrush, during Windrush, some of the people that have passed, people like my mum, maybe some of your relatives, remembering what they've done, the blueprint that they left on oh, Great okay. Britain. Okay, well, I accept yeah. that. Okay, so, that's so okay. So it is, it is a lest we forget. Please yeah. call it that. Otherwise, I would think somebody just saying, eh, we meet and then we go. It's a lest we forget. 
Thank you very much for that. Keep that flame going. And on that positive note, we're going to finish the session then. So thanks ever so much, everybody. Thanks so much, David. That was absolutely how, fascinating. How much, how much holiday have we got? <coughs> Pardon? How long have we got off to do our homework? Two weeks. Thank you. Uh, a, couple, a couple of weeks. We come back on the... Um... Yes. From, from the Liz the Millman School. 12. From the Liz Millman School. <laughs> and, and Dr. Dr. Vivian, Dr. Vivian, Sir Cliff said, "Can you connect him up with um, in friend? Who? Um, Mr. Ellis. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, we have many in Jamaica. <laughs> you know the playwright. Okay, okay, okay. All yeah, right. You got yes. my email and you got mm -hmm. mine on the thing, yeah? The Liz Millman School. Yeah, just tell him, gully, gully, gully." Yeah, Cliff Gully, yeah. All right. Okay, then. Good night, everybody, and thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you, Liz. Bye bye. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Don't eat too much bread and cheese. Bye. bye. <laughs>